the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, soldiers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. of cars on the nation's highways, it is inevitable that even the best drivers occasionally are guilty of a minor traffic violation. In most cases, a citation has the desired effect. The motorist drives on with increased alertness and caution. In rare instances, the issuing of a traffic ticket has results that are unexpected, even by veteran officers of the highway patrol. On May 25th, Patrolman Blackwell issued a citation to a motorist. The offense was minor and the driver cooperated. A routine incident. Yet, it was to provide a clue in a brutal murder. Two days later, boys hunting for frogs discovered the body of a man lying in the weeds at the edge of a pond. The victim had been shot through the back of the head. There was no identification on the body. Later that day, the records section reported to Dan Matthews. Didn't take our eye long on that one. The dead man is Vince Garrow. Vince Garrow? He's a racketeer. His fingerprints identified him. Any leads on who did it? Not yet. The coroner says he's been dead about two days. Look like a gang killing? I don't know. Run a check on Garrow. Find out who his friends are, if any. Get that, will you? Sergeant Walter speaking. Yes, Blackwell. No, he just stepped out. The Garrow killing? Yeah, go ahead. When was this? May 25th. 1.30 p.m. This man with Garrow, what did he look like? I see. Lucy, Dan, head and nod. All right, Blackwell, I'll tell him. That was Officer Blackwell. He gave Vince Garrett a traffic citation on Highway 20, May 25th. Let me see, that was two days ago. That's when the coroner said Garrow got it. It's all here. Blackwell said Garrow had a passenger with him, male Caucasian, about 50. Blackwell didn't pay too much attention to him. There was no trouble, just a routine citation. This is Matthews. Look up a traffic citation written by Blackwell. May 25th on Vince Garrow. Get it into me right away. Also a DMV check on the same vehicle. We've got to find that car Garrow was driving. Whoever's got it now might know how he ended up in that pond. Just do as I say, Joyce. Vince Garrow was found murdered. But why should the police suspect you? I don't know whether that officer will remember or not. If they question you, you don't know where I am. But, Dad, maybe you can help them. I can't take time out now for police hearings. I can help them a whole lot more if I finish this article. And you can help me if you'll keep them away from me. Well, Dad, you know best. Right. Now, uh, don't, don't worry. And I'll keep in touch with you. Take good care of yourself. Yeah, bye. There's a DMV report on the registration. Nothing irregular about it, except that it wasn't Garrow's car. It's registered to a guy named Dalquist. Sam Dalquist, 15433 Cedar. Sam Dalquist, wait a minute. He's the guy who sells those articles for big magazines on crime expose. Then it must have been Dalquist in the car with Garrow when he got the ticket. Yeah, but Garrow was driving. We know his reputation could have been a stolen car. Dalquist hasn't reported the car as stolen. Maybe he can't. Matthews. What's that, Sergeant? The bank verified the signature. Thanks very much. It looks like you're right. The lad man went through Garrow's clothes, found a check for $1,000 in his shoe. Made out to Garrow from Dalquist. Why would he give Garrow a thousand buck check? That's a good question. Let's find out.
At the Dahlquist home, Joyce Dahlquist informed Matthews that her father was not home and that she had no idea when he would return. Her nervous, uncommunicative manner caused Matthews to press for further details. Please sit down. Thank you. When did you see your father last? Two days ago, in the morning. You haven't heard from him since? No, but that isn't unusual. Why, sometimes when he's out of town working on an article, I don't hear from him for days. Could he be out of town now? He might be. I don't know. He never discusses his work with me. I suppose it's because he doesn't want me to worry about him. Does the name Vince Garrow mean anything to you? No, not a thing. Who is Vince Garrow? He's a petty racketeer. He was found murdered. It was in the papers. We thought your father might have a line on some of Garrow's enemies. Sometimes a good reporter gets information that we don't. If my father knew anything about this... this Garrow, he would have told you. Probably, but as you say, he's out of town. Maybe he hasn't heard about the murder. Would you do us a favor? Certainly. Would you let us go through your father's notes? We might be able to find a clue. Father had his notes with him. Besides, they wouldn't help you anyway. No, why not? Father had his own private shorthand code. It was his way of protecting his sources of information... You know, in, in case the notes fell into the wrong hands. Yeah, I see. You have no idea, Mr. Matthews, how hard it is to get people, or even honest people, to speak out against criminals. This a picture of your father? Yes. Could I borrow it for a couple of days? I'll return it to you. Why, of course. Why do you want it? Well, your father deals with dangerous men. If anything should happen to him, we'd like to be able to help him. Of course. Thanks for your cooperation. Let me know as soon as you hear from your father. I just talked to Blackwell. He sure is Dalquist. While he was writing a ticket, this other guy did nothing but scribble in a notebook. That explains why Garrow was driving. That's all it explains till we find Dalquist. I got an APB out on him. What about that thousand dollar check? How does that fit in? Maybe he was buying information. Yeah. And later they had an argument. Garrow wants more money. There's a fight. Dalquist kills him, ditches the body, and disappears. He wouldn't leave his signed check on Garrow. Well, maybe he got rattled or couldn't find it. I'd buy that if it was anybody else but Dalquist. He's a smart reporter. For years, he's been digging up information on racketeers and crooks. Maybe he did kill him. I don't know. But he's in an awful spot, and not only with us. How do you mean? Every racketeer in town will want to know what Garrow told him. Somebody else might be interested, too. The guy that Garrow used to work for. What's his name again? Malik. Malik. I'm going to have a talk with him. Unexpected pleasure. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Too bad about Garrow, wasn't it? Garrow? Vince Garrow, your boy. Oh, yes. Vince. I understand he died. He was found face down in a duck pond with a bullet hole in the back of his head. Oh, no. Vince used to work for me. Hard jobs now and then. I haven't seen him for three months. You know, I deplore violence. Cut the phony act. Your payroll reads like a police blotter. You're up to your ears in the rackets, and someday I'm going to prove it. But right now, I want to find out about Vince Garrow. Mr. Matthews, I just told you Garrow hasn't worked for me since... Who was he working for? I really haven't the slightest idea. Got any idea who'd want him out of the way? Not in the least. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Okay, Malik. One more thing. Has a writer by the name of Sam Dahlquist been around here to talk to you? Dahlquist? Dahlquist, no. What does he write about? Racketeers. Come in, Jaeger, and shut the door. Yes, Mr. Malik. You did a sloppy job of disposing of Garrow's body. Very sloppy. It was a fluke he was found so quick. There'd better not be any fluke on your next assignment. What's that, Mr. Malik? I want you to find this magazine writer, Sam Dalquist. Get rid of him completely, so completely that no one will ever see him again. Killing a reporter is almost as bad as killing a cop. The fuss it makes. Besides, Dalquist doesn't know who shot Garrow. No. But he knows who might have a motive. Put yourself in Dolphus' place. Somehow he suspected I sent Garrow to lead him into a trap. He talks Garrow into double-crossing me. Garrow lets him get away. Now do you see why Dolphus is dangerous? Yeah, but how do we find him? Search his house. Maybe you'll find something there that'll tip us off as to where he is. 
get Dahlquist before Dan Matthews gets to him. Statewide search proceeded for the missing crime writer, Sam Dahlquist, last seen in the company of the murdered gangster, Vince Garrow. Suspecting that Garrow was recently connected with Jake Malik, the highway patrol carefully searched the rumored racket leader's respectable front, a rural roadhouse. I found six cars back in Malik's garage. License number and registrations are all in here. We'll run a check on them. There's one car back there without any plates of registration. I got the engine number. Uh, put a tail on those hoodlums of Malik's. Malik acted too disinterested in what happened to Vince Garrow. from Jarvis, owns a motel. She said a man checked in, stayed there two days, then checked out. She sure is Dalquist. From the license number? Newspaper description. Also from the fact that the tenants complained. Complaints about what? His typewriter was working day and night all the time he was there. If it's Dalquist, he should have given a party instead of that. So you know the car you found at Malik's with no registration, no license? Yeah. Well, DMV says it checks out. It was registered to Garrow. And Malik claimed he hadn't seen Garrow in months. What's his angle? Well, here's one. Maybe he knows who killed Garrow. Now he's going to get rid of the evidence, then get even. That means getting rid of the car. It figures. But who is Malik after? Dalquist? Could be. We are. Operator, this is an emergency. There's someone in the house. A burglar. This is take anything of value. This wasn't planned burglary. They're after something else. I think the notes on your father's racket investigation. Well, then he didn't find anything. As I told you, my father's notes were in code, and he had them with him. Have you heard from your father? No, Mr. Matthews. 
Well, we won't bother you anymore tonight. I suggest you go to bed. As soon as the lab men are through, I'll see that everything's locked up. All right. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Good night. Good night. If you ask me, she's holding something back. But why? If you thought your father was wanted to murder, what would you do? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Somebody's after Delquist. Maybe next time they'll try through his daughter. I want a 24-hour stake up in this house till we find Sam Delquist. Nothing so far. Just letters from magazine editors and old receipts. And if that dame hadn't come in when she did, I bet I'd have found something. Here's a letter from Dalquist. Addressed to his daughter. It's postmarked Silver Canyon. Now, that's a mountain resort upstate, isn't it? Yeah. But it's dated nearly a year ago. This is it. Dear Joyce. I just finished another 2,000 words on my first draft. Maybe it's the mountain air, but the article just seems to flow. From now on, I'm going to do all of my writing up here at the cabin. Maybe Uncle Sam will let me deduct the cabin payments from my income tax. Chisler? Silver Canyon. That may be where he is now. Well, it's for sure he's not around town. Yeager. Take Greer and go up to Riverton tomorrow. Go to the county courthouse and check on the location of Dahlquist's cabin. Tell the clerk you're interested in buying property in Silver Canyon. Yes, sir. North on 19. Have 2830. Keep her in sight. That was the stakeout. Doc just got left the house. Her car was loaded with luggage. After what happened to her last night, she may be afraid to stay in the house alone. No, no, I don't think so. She keeps doubling back and going up alleys. She doesn't want company, that's for sure. Looks like she heard from her father. Get an unmarked car. I don't want to scare her off or anybody else who might be tailing her. I got the information, Mr. Malik. An old geezer at the courthouse. Let me look through a stack of records and... Never mind all that. Did you tell him what you were after? No, no, I did just like you told me. I, I said I was trying to trace some property my dead uncle used to have. All right, all right. Now, you get up there. If he is at the cabin, you know what to do. This time, I want a thorough job. Understand? Sure. Sure, Mr. Malik. until she gets to 17. With all of her doubling back, maybe we can pick her up where 17th crosses Piedmont. Why is it bugs love windshields? They're thick this season, all right. But did you ever try driving through a swarm of locusts? Here comes a convertible. Spotted us back there at the intersection.
be good enough to explain why I'm being followed, as though I were a criminal? Would you be good enough to tell me where you're going? It's none of your... No place in particular. I'm just out for a ride. It's an awful lot of equipment just for a ride. I don't have to account to you for anything. I have a perfect legal right to... Now stop playing games. You're going to meet your father, aren't you? Now, your father's not only a missing person, he's wanted in the questioning of the murder of Vince Garrow. My father didn't kill Vince Garrow. Miss Delquist, we don't think your father's a killer. We know what he does for a living. He digs up facts it's not healthy for a citizen to know. He's in danger, so are you. He can't fight killers with typewriters. He's up at our cabin at Silver Canyon, where he does most of his writing. He asked me not to tell anyone. Side. What do we do? Wait for him to come out? I uh, suppose he doesn't. It'll be quieter if we do it inside. I'll take the back door, you cover the front. Well, look, he's a bum shot. We gotta finish this quick and get out of here. Came from up there. Come on. Fire a couple more. I'll sneak around and back of the shed to the back door. No, no, he wants us to keep shooting. He figures somebody will hear it. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Dalquist, you hear me? I hear you. You haven't got a chance. Play it smart and Malik will make you a deal. What kind of deal? Well, it'll pay you ten times what you'll get for your magazine article. He'll pay me for not writing it. Is that it? Right. He'll throw in a trip to Europe. Malik doesn't want to kill you. Just wants to get you out of the country. Come on out. We'll talk it over. You're ready to blast him when he comes out. You can tell Malik the whole story's in the mail. On its way to a magazine in New York. You're lying. Kill me and you'll just prove every line I wrote. That you or Malik murdered Vince Carroll. He's bluffing. We can't risk any more shooting. We'll burn him out. How? What with? Well, there's firewood stacked by the cabin. No power lines coming in. That means no gas, no electricity for lights. So he's got to have fuel. Liquid fuel. I'll look in the shed. You watch Dalquis. Make sure he doesn't get away. There, see what I tell you. Kerosene. One can's full, the other about half. I can still see him. Spread this stuff around the place, touch a match, and we got him. He'll have to come out. Run for the cabin. Spread this stuff around. I'll cover you. Get going. They're going to fire the cabin. We're going to stop before the whole hillside goes up. Hold your fire, Delquist. It's a highway patrol. Come out, Delquist. You're Malik's men. Gunning for Delquist. Is that your idea of Malik's? We've got you an attempted murder in arson. What are you trying to cover up? A real murder? Maybe Garrow's? If one of these guns fired the shot, the lab is going to tell me. That's Greer's gun in your right hand. Take him away. Dalquist, I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. I'm sure glad to see you, Matthews. You could have that pleasure if you'd let me know as soon as you found out that Garrow was murdered. You'd have saved everybody a lot of trouble. Did you finish your article? Yes, that's why I... You write on dangerous subjects. Next time, let's collaborate, huh? 